Okay, so for setting up, this is a city 2.6 as the time of this making this video. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find city 2 on the asset store. And then I'm going to import. Oh, wait, I've got to update. As you can see over here, there's plenty of videos, tutorials, uh, and pictures, screenshots to show you the kind of quality you can achieve with 2.6. Uh, also, most of these pictures, I'm actually using Gaia Pro uh, for the landscape, just FYI. Now we're going to import into the project. So uh, with the 2.6 uh, city, when it's imported, um, it'll have an auto tags and layers setup. It'll just take the next available slots in the tags and layers fields, and it's going to put a terrain, node, road, and cell into your project file. So here's the folder structure, and let's look at the layers. So there it is, terrain, node, road, and cell. And uh, we'll go look at the tags, and I'll just show you that it's also there. And there you go. So there's the tags, and again, terrain node road cell. So the only really thing you need to think about right now when you're doing setup is the terrain. Um, when we create a new scene, you know, if you want to see this PDF as well uh, with some instructions in it, but I'm going to go over setup with you in this video. So let's go ahead and uh, bring in a terrain. It can be a standard plane mesh or whatever, but we'll use the terrain. So we can use the blending features um, and just set the tags to terrain and the layer to terrain. Again, whether it's a terrain or a plane mesh with a collider on it, you just have to make sure that it's set that. Now the terrain, only the terrain collider needs to be set to layer. So if you have uh, objects nested in the terrain, it only has to be the top layer. So just to show you, we'll click out. I'm right clicking to drop nodes. Anytime I enclose, it creates a cell and then populates that cell with the theme the district theme. You can click on the road and edit it again. You can edit the spline, and then after editing, click Generate. So there you are. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. You can do it however you want. And it's a pretty iterative process, which is the point, so that's kind of nice. That's what we were going for. And these are the colliders, show nodes and cells. You can, uh, these are just for the interaction of the system. You can turn these off. And once you're going into play mode, you won't need them. The next version will automatically turn them off once you go into play mode. Uh, but as you can see, I can now have a pretty good layout already. And that's pretty much the basics. That gets you up and running. You can change the theme once the cell's laid down or you can set them globally when you're clicking out the nodes. Just to show you the example, there's now the these are the prefabs that come with the system. Um, they're nothing too amazing. They just to show you an example of setup. And the next video I'm going to do is going to be actually how to set up your own custom prefabs. And clear graph. And there you go. That's that's the main setup, but let's go ahead and add some terrain heights to the terrain and I'll show you uh, the blend. Now there's another tutorial video that's like maybe 45 minutes. Um, it's very in depth. Um, these are just the shortcuts. So if you want to get up and running, don't need the full depth video. But if you do want that, uh, that's also available on the Reckless Games YouTube channel, along with this one. So. The only time we want to grab terrain heights is because I've added heights to the systems. When you first generate the graph, it'll grab the heights. But now that I've changed the terrain heights, I want to just update that terrain heights once. I don't have to do it again unless I make any more changes. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and click out like normal. And you can see it's all contouring to the terrain. 
Now, as you click out, the roads will contour to the terrain heights that are saved, just as we did. But the, you have to click blend terrain to actually contour the terrain to the road now. See, it's the other way around. So we do, we do both to get the best results. So as we lay out the road contours to the terrain, and then once we blend terrain, the terrain is now being contoured to the road and the cells and the sidewalks, et cetera. And there you go. See, so now it's well blended. The lighting's not the best in this default scene. I, I'll grant you that. But you can clearly see it is blended well.